and I'm upstairs and I come downstairs, you know, in the, in the reception area, sometimes they'll tell me, you need to get upstairs. Because I'm joking around and, 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 and playing and having fun with people. But, you know, we should always be the one that brings life. People should be glad when we show up. That's right. You know, uh, my mother, uh, bless her heart, I, she got three children and, and I'm her favorite. <laughs> and I'm her youngest, I'm her baby, and I'm her favorite. And, and I called her the other night. She said, David, I just light up when I see it. It's, it's you that's calm. You know, you just bring me joy. Well, you know, that a life-giving spirit should bring joy everywhere we go. Amen. Amen. We should be those that, that bring that joy, that joy. You know, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 talks about what we're spirit, soul, and body. You know, and... and when we're born again, our spirit's reborn, right? But it's so easy to live in the soulish realm, to be a to be a uh, a soulish Christian, right? And and to think, you know, well, you just need. I tell you, all you need to do is when you're talking to somebody and they're going through something, you start giving them advice. All you need to do is this, this, and this. Well, you know, if you just straighten up, well, if you just, you know, instead of Listening to what the Holy Spirit right. is saying and being that life giver. You know, Jesus didn't say a lot of foolish things, right? He didn't say any foolish things, actually. He spoke life in every situation. You know, I was thinking of, of uh, the Lord and during, during worship there, and I was thinking of it like a spigot. Like, if you could imagine, over there is everything in heaven on the other side of that wall. And the people need that here. And we're like the spigot that it comes through. You know, we're the, we're the channel to bring the Holy Spirit into the earth through us as believers. And it's a choice. You know, are we going to be the life giver? Are we going to be the quickening spirit? Right? And, and my spirit was quickened during worship. Amen? I felt that presence... Come into the room. Amen. And and that was brought to the worship team. Amen. Well, that can come through you. Into your life. Into your family. Right? You can be the life giver. Amen. So I've just got some areas uh, that you can begin to, to bring life. And one is uh, to control your tongue. It says in Proverbs that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So remember... That you're, when you speak, you're either speaking life or you're speaking death. Right. right? And we want to be those that speak life into the situation and into the, the earth. Amen? So the first thing we can, can do is control our tongue. Amen? And uh, speak faith only or keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you know, if you're not going to speak faith, if you're not going to speak life, just don't say anything. Amen? Better to say nothing at all than, than to bring death into the situation. Amen. You know, I'm preaching to myself, right? I'm seeing myself at work right now. And I'm saying, uh, I need to control my tongue, you know? You know, if I'm not speaking faith. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to get louder as I preach. <laughs> As I go along there, amen. amen. But we want to be those that, that speak. And then we want to know our authority as a life giver. Amen. Know the authority that we carry as believers. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse 18 through 20, Behold, I give you power, that's exousia, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. He has given us authority as a believer. You know, my uh, my father ran a, a lawn and garden business. And in the last part of his life, he was he was ailing in body and, and physically, uh, you know, uh, in his last days. And I began to go and help him with the business. So he gave me authority in his business. And one day a young man uh, came in to, or a man called, he actually called on the phone. He was a, a client, said, I want to speak with your father. And I went and I called dad and said, 
said, this guy only wants to talk to you. He said, well, you tell him, you speak for me. Right? So I go back and I said, well, a dad said that I can take care of it. What do you need? And he said, well, I only want to speak to your father. So I call my dad back. You know, he's in, he's in this, the house and I'm out in the shop. And dad said, you tell him, if he doesn't want to talk to you, he needs to just leave. Or, or not call back, not come back. Amen. Because he's my son and he has authority. Well, you think about that. As a child of God, you have authority. You know, and you can use that authority to bring life or to suck life out of people. You know, you, you can be the life giver or you can be the one that, that sucks the life out. Amen. We want to be those that bring life. Man, I'm flying through my message tonight. I believe it's going to be a, a time of prayer and ministry tonight. Amen. Because uh, the Lord is just pushing me. But then the, the next thing you can do is pray to bring life into a situation. You know, I, I think sometimes we underutilize prayer. We don't realize, you know, well, it's like, well, I can't do anything else. I guess I'll pray. Right? When, when prayer is what brings life in to the situation. You know, we have three children. And when they were at home, I watched everything they did. And we, we tried to control their lives, so to speak, and, and guard them. And then when they got their license and they left home, and, and, they, and there was that time as a parent, I felt like everything was out of my control. But guess what? It wasn't out of my control. Because I could pray over them, right? I could pray a, a, a covering over them. I could keep them covered in prayer. So, it says in, uh, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. Like 
10 minutes. And I'm at the end of my message. Amen. Because what I felt like tonight, if it's all right with the pastor, is we're going to pray for that compassion and for that, to be that life-giving spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask if, if my wife will pray with us and, and, and uh, uh, Pastor Mike and Rachel and Tara, Pastor Bob and, and Debbie. And you know, we got, what? We got uh, several pastors here. Amen. And I felt like we're supposed to pray. I can't even put it in words. I just feel like we're supposed to pray for you all to be that life-giving spirit, that quickening spirit. Unless if you'll come up, do you have anything on your heart? No? <laughs> Amen. Uh, you? No? you feel like I'm on with the Holy Spirit? Like you said, you know, with, with uh, worship, praise and worship, it was wonderful. Uh, that's the type of worship that I grew up in, you know, my home church, and it just brought me back home, you know, and I just felt home and comfortable with you guys, and, and you just led us right into the worship and the spirit, and, and it's just heavy in here right now, and I believe Amen. God's going to do some mighty things tonight. Amen. Praise the How many want to be a life-giving spirit? Who want, who want to be the one that brings life into the situation? Amen. So if you just come forward, let us...